Supraclavicular brachial plexus block is an immensely useful technique. It is something that people have also called the spinal anesthesia of the upper extremity. That's how complete it is as an aesthetic for the upper extremity. However, it needs to be treated with a lot of respect because of so many vascular and neural elements in here. Let's look at this anatomy. If you look at this anatomy over here, unless you are very skilled in ultrasound imaging, this is quite intimidating. It's difficult to recognize what is what on this particular image. Now, people who are skilled, it would easily, they would easily recognize that that's the subclavian artery right here, that this is the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, that it is the middle trunk of the brachial plexus, and is the inferior trunk of the brachial plexus. And everything is enveloped into the sheath of the brachial plexus, which is basically on the first rib, and that's the pleural cavity. So that's what the anatomy is. However, you really need to be pretty good to recognize this right away. So what is the best way to learn this sonoanatomical pattern? For sure, in my opinion, the best way is to study the reverse ultrasound anatomy animations by Nisora. Here you can see how the image comes on that basically illustrate what you saw on ultrasound. And the animations allow you to go back and forth between the ultrasound image and an illustration. Ultrasound image and an illustration. So this way you start chiseling these sonoanatomy patterns so next time you place a probe on a patient you start seeing these patterns. So let's watch this a little bit more. So that's the upper trunk we talked about, that's the middle trunk we talked about, and that's the inferior trunk we talked about. Now this is what I refer to, you must use color Doppler when you do this block because you can always see vascular elements inside the plexus. This particular artery is a dorsal scapular artery, and you really kind of have to avoid it when you go with your needle inside the brachial plexus sheath. One other thing that is very important to notice is, if you look at this illustration, in addition to the sheath that envelops the plexus, you also see septa inside the brachial plexus at this location. This is why you need to inject on at least two locations. Usually one is at the corner pocket for the inferior trunk, and one is in between the upper and the middle trunk. Okay, so let's see that. So first we're going to take you back to the ultrasound image, and now you start seeing actually what we saw in the illustration. You see, it already helps. Now we're going to label the upper trunk, the middle trunk, the lower trunk, and everything is within the sheath. And again, that's the subclavian artery, first rib, and the pleural cavity underneath. Okay, from this ultrasound image, now we're going to take you to another animation, reverse ultrasound animation of the block performance. And as I mentioned in the introduction, there are three important things or three steps to accomplish a supraclavicular brachial plexus block. The first step is to recognize that the entire structure of the brachial plexus is enveloped by a brachial plexus sheath. The second one is we must make two injections. One is for the lower trunk in the corner packet, and one is in between the upper and the middle trunk. And let's do that now. So here's the needle that comes and negotiates its way through the cervical fascia into the brachial plexus sheath, and now we're guiding the needle into the corner packet for the first injection of 10 milliliters of local anesthetic. Once we do that, we want to pull the needle back and again negotiate the needle's path in between the upper trunk and the middle trunk. And this is where another injection of one more dose of 10 milliliters, so total 20, occurs. And again, the idea here is that we don't miss anything in this a uh, neural element over here, which is enclosed inside the sheath. So two times 10 milliliters. Now, when you see these two injections and all of these neural elements, now you know why we always do triple monitoring. We use ultrasound to monitor visually needle placement and the spread of the local anesthetic. We monitor it using nerve stimulation because if your needle encounters one of these neural elements on its path towards the injection point, you may get an unexpected motor response. 
which allows you an opportunity to stop advancing before you enter a, uh, a nerve. And finally, we use injection pressure monitoring because an injection within one of these densely packed elements will result in high opening injection pressure. And as soon as you see the pressure rising, it gives you a chance to stop injecting before the injection into one of these neural elements occurs. And that was the supraclavicular brachial plexus block in three steps. Mm -hmm.